Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. We, uh, we've done some stuff on TLS 1.3, uh, some stuff on perfect forward secrecy, and Diffie-Hellman key exchange is tied into that, that whole forward secret, perfect forward secrecy idea. And so a few people have asked, hey, how does the Diffie-Hellman key exchange work uh, from a mathematical perspective? So we're going to run through that today, show you kind of how the whole thing works. The essence of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange is you have a client and a server that both need to exchange uh, keys and ultimately come to a shared secret key so that they can do the bulk encryption um, you know, when they communicate back and forth. So the, issue, the, the essence again of Diffie-Hellman is that we're working on that key exchange. How do they actually exchange keys? All right, so in a, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of draw this whole thing up here. You've got the typical client on this side and server on this side and they need to exchange keys, right? So that they can get to that, again, that bulk encryption, uh, you know, algorithm, that, that bulk encryption at the bottom. So uh, the whole key exchange thing, the Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange works like this. Before they start to exchange, uh, you know, values and numbers and all that kind of stuff, there is a shared, there's a couple of shared values that they've already agreed upon. Uh, one of them we'll call a modulo, or I'll put mod, uh, which is also um, referred to a lot of times as, you know, by the letter P. And then there's also this idea of a base, which is referred to, I'm going to call it G. Uh, some people use N for the base. Frankly, it doesn't really matter what letter you use to describe it. It's uh, what matters is that it is there and it is a shared value that is known, frankly, to everyone. Even an outside like eavesdropper would know these values. Um, and a couple of notes about these numbers that are, again, uh, agreed upon beforehand. P, the value for P is a prime number, and the larger the value of P, the better, or the more, the more secure this whole thing is going to be. Uh, G, as well, is related to P in that it is a primitive root modulo of P. So, um, so these two numbers are not just randomly uh, you know, generated prime numbers. They actually are... Uh, you know, they're related to one another. So, uh, so anyway, in this case, I'm going to put a couple of uh, actual numbers up here so we can run through an actual example of how this whole thing would work. And for the um, random number P, I'm going to say 23 is the value there. And then uh, one of the primitive root modulos of 23, which again has, is, is the property of G, um, is 5. So I'm going to choose 5 for our value of G. Of course, these are not numbers you would want to use in the real world because they're very easy to crack, but it shows the actual mathematics of it all, which are exactly the same. Uh, the, you know, the mathematical formulas and all that stuff. All right, so you have a client over here, you have a server over here, you have known agreed upon numbers in the middle that both parties have agreed to and that are known to the whole world. All right, what the client and server are both going to do independent of one another is uh, calculate these secret values. So I'll say secret value or secret number over here. And I'm going to call on the client side, I'm going to say little a is what we're going to represent that to be. And then over here on the server side, there's also a secret number um, and we'll call it uh, little b. All right. So the formula to create the secret value on the client side and then also the one on the server side, it goes like this. Um, or, or I'm sorry, the, the secret value for the client and the server are just randomly chosen numbers. Uh, I should say that first. And then you're going to use those to then create another shared value. So the secret value that I'm going to choose over here for A is going to be the number 4. And then over here for B, I'm going to say is the number three. So again, these are just randomly generated numbers by the client and the server independently. Uh, you can see they don't have to be prime. Uh, they're just random numbers that, that the uh, client and server generate, which, um, by the way, the thing, one of the things that, that underpins all of this stuff is a, uh, is a good random number generator. So we won't get into to, you know, how to do good random number generation, but just suffice it to say you need a good random number generator uh, to, you know, to to create a lot of this stuff and, and really make it secure. So, um, so anyway, so you've got four over here, you've got three over here. These are the secret values that no one is going to know except the client and the server um, and no one else. All right, from these numbers, we can start to calculate what we'll call a shared value. 
And so on the client side, because we're gonna use the little a value uh, to generate this calculated number, um, we'll call the shared number now big A, and that is going to equal G, which is the base, raised to the power of little a, and then modulo, and then of course the mod is uh, P. All right, so that's the overall uh, formula to create this now shared value that we're gonna send over to the server. The server's gonna do the same thing over here, so we're gonna say B, big B, equals the base G raised to little b power, modulo P as well, all right? <clears throat> so as we roll through this, big A is gonna equal G, which is five, raised to the power of four, modulo P, which is 23, all right? And then the same thing's gonna happen over here, uh, G, which is uh, still five, raised to the power of little b, which is three, modulo P, which is 23, all right? So these values are going to uh, come out to be, big A is gonna be the number four, and big B is gonna be the number 10. All right, what we're gonna do is the client is going to share that A with the server, and so that again equals four. So they're just simply gonna send the number four over to the server. Likewise, the server is gonna come over here and say B equals 10, and the server's gonna share that B number with the client. So again, if you're a bad guy in the middle, you have uh, the value for P, you have the value for G, now you have the calculated value A that was derived using the secret value. You also have the calculated value B, which is derived using this secret value over here, you know, given these formulas. Um, and then what they're gonna be able to do at that point, the client and the server, because they have their secret values, of course, they're gonna be able to calculate what I'm gonna call uh, this shared key, so shared, I'll just call it shared, you can call it whatever you want, and that is gonna be derived or calculated via this formula um, using the calculated value from the other side. So the way that the formula goes is this is big B raised to the power of little a, so you're still using your own secret value, modulo P. So we're still gonna mod with the, with the mod value that we have up here. And then again on this other side, we're gonna say secret or shared, so I'll say shared equals, and it's gonna be kind of just the reverse. So they're gonna use the, uh, the value for A raised to the power of little b uh, mod p, all right? So you can start to see where you use the calculated value from the other side, but you still use your own shared value that no, or your own secret value that no one else knows. Um, so the question is, are the, when we run through these shared value equations, are we gonna get the same thing? And in this case, the answer is, this is gonna be 10 raised to the power of four, right? Mod, that's a four, mod 23, right? Because our mod is still 23. And then this one is gonna be A, which is four, raised to the power of B, which is three, mod 23. All right, and the question is, what is all that? And the answer is 18 over here, and you guys can get your calculators out and all the rest, but the answer over here is also gonna be, um, excuse me, 18, that was not a very good eight. All right, so what has happened here is you have, you have a client and a server who have run through all these different mathematical you know, calculations and all that, and they have arrived at the same shared value, um, and then they can use that to then input into a bulk encryption uh, algorithm, so I'll just say, um, you know, bulk, you know, bulk encryption down here, uh, and that may be something like, you know, AES or you know, what AES is a really common one. But they can use that as their shared key to then, uh, you know, bulk encrypt everything beyond that. All right, so a couple of things. Um, again, if you're a if you're a attacker, eavesdropper, bad guy, you've got P, you've got G, you've got A, you got B, and so the question is, can you calculate? this shared value, and the answer is it's very, very difficult as long as this value for P is uh, large enough. So, um, so anyway, this is the, the mathematical formula, the mathematical problem that this, uh, that this is based on is called the discrete logarithm problem. And, uh, and that underpins the whole you know, security of this entire thing. So, um, so anyway, it's, again, if, if P is large enough, then it's very computationally expensive, very computationally difficult to derive 
this shared value. Uh, one last thing that I would mention, um, whenever you talk about uh, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral, which is a term you may hear from time to time, uh, ephemeral means very short-lived, it doesn't, it's not around for very long, and in the context of Diffie-Hellman Diffie ephemeral key exchange, uh, essentially what happens is these secret values up here, these random integers that the server and client generate on their own, uh, they change every single session between a client and a server. So, um, so it, it makes it very, very difficult if you were to grab this, you know, if you were to somehow calculate the shared key in one session, because this is going to change, even though PG and all this other stuff stays the same, because these secret values, these integers change, change every single time, um, you would not be able to, to go back and decrypt uh, every single you know, message between client and server except for just that one session that you got. So it makes it, it, makes it uh, more secure. That's what we call perfect forward secrecy. So anyway, so I hope you've learned a couple things here with Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange. It's kind of cool the way the mathematics works behind it. Uh, you, know, you use it knowingly or not probably every single day multiple times. Uh, but here it is, really, uh, really cool stuff that helps the internet work and stay secure. So uh, thanks for hanging in there and watching this Lightboard lesson. Hey, if you like this video, you can uh, click right here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.